I've noticed a lot more shows. Smallville did this around season six or seven. I forget exactly where, but it's very dark. You know, the, the most the oh. series of Batman was very dark. Uh, the last two Superman movies have been very dark. Um, obviously, Days of Future Past is probably going to be quite dark. Um, do we sense that like this is what where shows are going right now? Is is it's cool to be dark in our shows? And we what do we what do we think about that in terms of how that is in Arrow right now? I have a real big concern that that's the way that people think they need to have comics go, and especially in the DC world because the Batman shows were always so dark and they were the most successful. And whenever they tried to pull out another show like. Um, the not the latest Superman movie, but the one previous to that. It was it, they Superman it wasn't Earth. dark, and they tried to make it um, I don't know, not necessarily campy, but it just was it was lighter. And then with the newest B, the Man of Steel movie, it was a lot darker, and there was kind of a, a darker tone to the show. I will. It does. It feels like DC if, is almost doing that a lot to like distance themselves from Marvel. Where the last couple Marvel movies, even when they get very dark and serious, still have that kind of like lighthearted, playful tone to them. And DC is trying to do more of these like serious, like people standing on rooftops delivering soliloquies type of movies. This I don't want Arrow to be like a campy show, but I do think that as a character, as I was getting at before when I was talking about Mike Grell's version of Green Arrow, his version of Green Arrow is a very playful <laughs> character. Even though he's very serious, his the the Oliver Queen that I am used to, that I expect, is not afraid to crack a joke in the face of adversity, whereas this version of Oliver Queen is very joyless, and I think they're making yeah. the entire show seem very joyless and kind of nothing more than like a horrible pun at some point. It's never it's never a tone of positive, happy playfulness. It's always... But I don't want it to be a fun show. I would like a serious show, a dark show even, but I would like my character to take himself less seriously, perhaps. And I think, I know what you mean, there's this, um, or in the comic books it feels like Oliver Queen is very capable of, no matter how serious the situation is, whether he's dealing with, like, a serial killer or whatever horrifying criminal, he's still able to, like, make light of situations, and it's not because he doesn't take what he's doing seriously, but, like, the joy that he's having is in knowing that he is making a difference and stopping the bad guy and making the world a better place. So he has these, like, nice, like, yeah, I got him moments that you don't really see in the show so much where he just doesn't really seem to ever enjoy what he's doing. Well, it's like you said when you said that he was created as a version of Batman that's like a, a, a Robin Hood version of Batman, but in also he's supposed to be... A, he was rich in, in the first place and decided to do it for fun. Like, yeah, that's part of the core of his character is that he is doing it for fun. I think that one of the best features of Green Arrow from the comic books is his banter with other characters. Whether it's banter with Batman or with uh, Green Lantern, he has some of the best back and forth with these characters in the comic books. And I, it's one thing I'm actually really looking forward to with the new Flash series. Because I see that having the ability of having Barry being like quick and witty and the actual like grumpy, grumbling... Um, uh, Ollie version in this one, like being able to play off that really well. So I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that because I don't see it right now, and that's probably one of the things that I didn't enjoy about this is because I don't feel that there's any uh, good character on that show that he can like pretty much like banter back and forth with. And I was hoping it was going to be Roy in the series, but it's not. Well, it's not yet. It's not yet. It could be. It does, that seemed to be one of the nicer things about that they had in the Flash trailer, was if we get that kind of, like, Batman, Superman, Brave and the Bold, light guy, dark guy dynamic out of uh, the Flash and Green Arrow, I'm going to be really happy with that. I also am hoping for a lot of crossover. I mean, obviously, one is a spin-off of the other very directly, but I actually am hoping that they'll do something... Um, <clears throat> like they've done before with other shows, um, you know, I think back to Star Trek, for example, um, how they had multiple series running concurrently and they actually played uh, back and forth between the, the shows and, and, you know, consequences in one from the other. And I, I think that would, for me, you know, just talking about season three, um, that's what I would love to see, more back and forth consequences between the two series. 
here's what I wanted to say earlier about campiness and the series connection to the DCU. I feel like every superhero movie or TV show has to do this thing. This they love these like little fan bonuses where somebody mentions it and you go like, oh, that's not just a random lawyer. That's like all the way back to Michael Keaton as Batman. You go, oh, that guy's Harvey Dent, and I know he's going to be Two-Face in the future even though he's just a minor character. And we enjoy as fans being able to see those minute details. And But Arrow does them. This is my least favorite thing about Arrow is that it does those so often that it's actually becoming like gratingly annoying. Every street they go to is... It's like, okay, like I can recognize the creators, like Carmine Infantino. Okay, oh, we're going to the Infantino Hotel. Okay, that makes sense. Or like Jack Kirby. Oh, it's a, he's a Kirby Plaza. Okay, I get that. Uh, I will also, anytime uh, they make a reference to Bill Finger, who is a prominent uh, narrow writer in addition to creating Batman, anytime a place is named after Bill Finger, it's hilarious to me. Anytime they're like, oh, yeah, he's over at uh, Finger Avenue. Uh, oh, Finger that just Paul, sounds... Uh. <laughs> yep, over you we're gonna go to the Finger Hotel. That sounds like something that a high school boy would say. Um But every it seems like every side character on the show has like like oh like that's the real name of Geoforce. Oh, that's the real name of like some random schmuck who nobody's ever heard of. Uh and it reached the most annoying peak for me um when Amanda Waller is pitching her idea of Task Force X to John Diggle, and John is like, oh, so so what's this? Like, you're, you're putting some together some kind of team, Amanda? And she says, it's not a team. It's really more of a squad. <laughs> and the, as, as viewers, we're supposed to be like, oh my god, she's foreshadowing the Suicide Squad. But what kind of pedantic fucking asshole do you have to be to correct somebody? <laughs> Nobody would ever be like, oh, it's not, it's more of a group. Wouldn't call it a... Who talks like that? And so that stuff, that's, that stuff is driving me insane about the show. Billy, it's not a group. It's just a collection, okay? <laughs> I think on the subject of using characters' names that in vain, perhaps, I think sometimes they, they might be accidentally cutting off opportunities to use characters later. Like you said, mm-hmm. that guy's got the same name as Geoforce. Well... And they kill him. We're never going to see Geo Force. Yeah. Or the same thing happened. Like that's exactly why we have this weird Laurel situation because she's been named Laurel in honor of Dinah Laurel Lance. Or and you're like, hooray, Dinah Laurel Lance. But then there's nobody named Dinah. There's nobody. Well, the mom is right. Yeah, the mom is. But so is Dinah Drake. Like they're always named. She was always named Dinah. Her daughter's supposed to be Dinah. Yeah. The things, the things that bother me. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, you're, so first of all, um, beyond not just references to creators and, and you know street names and hotels, actually one thing I saw, I forget which website it was, um, like if you look at like the, even the posting, like when they were walking to the lawyer's office and it had this like 27 character multi-hyphenated name lawyer's office. And I'm like, that's a, just a <laughs> weird name. And so I actually Googled it, and it turns out it's like the set director or something. You know, it's like, just everything's a nod to something. Like, you can't, like, they actually had a BABT something was like the code to kill, uh, I forget what it was, it was um, um, Deadshot's like, you know, code or something. But it's like Brave and the Bull, or Brave and, yeah. You know, um, so... It was um, anyway. anyway so lots of references like that. But actually, just going back to something Mike was talking about a little bit earlier, uh, flashbacks. They actually use a lot, a lot, a lot of flashbacks in this show. Um, obviously, it has a lot to do with not just the fact that um, you know there's a lot of backstory to tell and how they all come together and all the characters of you know either had some sort of interaction, a la Lost, and turns out they're all best friends or whatever. Uh, but um, more importantly. Um, they, there's five years or, or so on and off the island that they have to tell uh, in through, through these flashbacks. I, I think they're in some cases overusing the flashback, and and I think some cases um, it would be just as well served by stating it rather than actually showing it. And I think I think it was Rav that said earlier, um, you know, maybe there's a lot of filler that they're just chewing up airtime with, like these you know, overdone flashbacks. What do you, what do you think, Mike? 
Yeah, the flashbacks, they really hurt me. Like, they just, they abuse the crap out of them. And not only the fact that it's, like, a flashback to Dawson's Creek with, like, the 90s hair that Ollie has, it's just, it hurts a lot. Um, but, like, I they really, really overkill it. There's so much that they could just, like, put into snippets, but it's, like, Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, like, it just, it loses me. And I just don't enjoy it. I, I like it. I feel like it's a nice way of adding depth to the show. I enjoy seeing uh, all the chances you get to see, like, Oliver in the present day. And then we get to go back and look at, like, James Vanderbeek Oliver uh, just, like, whining to his parents and being irresponsible. It's a nice way of seeing how much the character has grown. But it, it definitely, I feel like the writers are trying to have the show be, like, Lost or Once Upon a Time, if that's your thing. Um, and I, as somebody who loved Lost, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. You know what, I really enjoyed Lost too, but I think I would have more enjoyed seeing like uh, maybe like a full episode dedicated to like the past, like a full flashback episode, or okay. even having yeah. the first season. If they had done a first season of him on the island and then brought it back for like second season or even like half a season or whatever of him like in the present time, that might have been a little bit more interesting in my opinion. I agree. Well, I don't fully agree. I think that... <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me start off. Because <laughs> I started laughing at Billy. Okay. <laughs> My feelings about the flashbacks are... That they get kind of confusing. They're getting kind of bloated because at the start of the show, you imagine that he had been there for five years and... Maybe some horrible stuff that we were going to find out about happened. And then all of this awesome stuff. Like, you imagine that the person he is in the first episode, in the present, is derived immediately from the five years he spent on the island. But then as they go further and further into these flashbacks that keep getting more and more elaborate, and eventually, now even, we know now that he actually left the island before he came back. So there's even more stuff that he's learning. Like, how did you learn to fly a plane? Well, I went to China. And <laughs> I never told anybody about it. I and probably should have mentioned that. And was super sad about being an, on an island for five years. <laughs> it's so, okay. We, we know he'll come back to the island, and he'll eventually fight the smoke monster, so everything will be okay. Maybe then we'll find out what the heck that thing was. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a smoke monster. It's really more of a squad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good call, um, good call. Well, it was, uh, that's, okay, going back to the, um, to the DC Universe Connections thing that you were just talking about, one of the things that I think the show is doing really well, uh, and this also with, the, with uh, Sarah and Laurel having different names, is there are these kind of like meta-mysteries that they're doing to play with actual fans of the show, um, <clears throat> where for me, I, uh, I, I'm friends with a bunch of people who don't read comic books but do religiously watch the show, and it's Why? very yeah. funny to me. What? Why are you friends with them? <laughs> um, Why are we not actual very, fans? <laughs> yeah. It's very funny to me seeing things that people who don't read comic books think are plot twists. Like, I have a friend who could not believe it when Sebastian Blood turned out to be evil. She was like, oh my god, what a twist that a guy named Sebastian... And as, as comic book readers, they would never even cross our minds that a guy whose name is Sebastian... And he's Brother Blood, we know that, but that would never even occur to us. Whereas there, whereas there are things that are surprising to us based on the fact that we have read comic books and things that other people don't really consider twists. Um, that's uh, with the new Flash series. They're having the Professor Zoom identity be kind of a mystery, where he's meeting a guy whose last name is Thawne and seems to have, like, a rivalry with Barry Allen the same way that the original Professor Zoom does. But then he's also, like, his mentor figure is this dude strapped to a wheelchair who keeps pushing him to be a better hero. And it's fun that, like, if you don't read comic books, you wouldn't appreciate that meta-mystery and be like... Whereas for us, 
if it was either one of those guys individually, we'd go, oh, it's clearly that guy. But they're giving the fans things like that to mess with them on another level. I want to I want to clarify that the guy that you're talking about in the wheelchair is Hunter Zolomon, the uh, Professor Zoom character. Yeah, Zoom the the Reverse Flash to Wally West. Yeah. Complain about Mike's description of Black Canary. I feel like she's a pretty awesome lady. That is, that is like she's a pretty awesome lady because you're physically attractive to her. Or oh, the shut, the, shut the fuck up, <laughs> Mr. S- Mr. Strong Female Characters just happen to be... Oh, like they're, oh, strong female characters are like sassy women you're attracted to? Shut oh. the fuck up, Mike. She has the most <laughs> intense abs I've ever seen on a woman, but still, I think as a character, she, she is more engaging to me than, say, well, than definitely her sister, but... Yeah, I think Felicity is where all the excitement is. I think when you were talking about who he can banter with, that's Felicity. If she'll stop fawning over him, they can have some pretty sweet banter. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, if, if she just holds on for like a second to Barry Allen, I think they can actually have a relationship, and then that she'll like forget about Ollie, and I then she'll to... stop being dumb. I way. wanted to point out the irony of the fact that there's this love triangle where you know how in Smallville Chloe was like in love with Superman and then Bart. he was like, "Well, I love this other chick." And then she's like, "Well, I'm going to go date this other superhero over here." And that was Green Arrow. And then in Green in <laughs> Arrow Felicity's like, "I love you, Green Arrow." And he's all like, "Well, I'm kind of in love with this other chick." And she's like, "Well, Flash. So what <laughs> happens in Flash? <laughs> uh, so yeah, just smart blonde girls just can't catch a break in our society. <laughs> smart, pretty blondes. That's, See, I do. I, I love that. The, I love that the writers are kind of playing around with it. Also, like they know how much more the fans love Oliver and Felicity than any other romantic relationship on that show. And I feel like every couple episodes they do a thing where Oliver and Fel- their faces get just a little bit too close, and they're like, "Wow, our friendship is so meaningful." Yeah, I definitely prefer us as friends. Ugh, I hate this. I'm loving that. Speaking of girls that are having a tough go of it, how do we feel about Laurel? Like, I actually didn't mind Laurel as a character for the first, like, six episodes of season one. I was like, all right, this girl's, you know, she's a lawyer, she's doing good things, she's a very independent person, has opinions on stuff, and won't take crap from anybody. And then it's like she broke down because of obviously all the crap that went down, but she's just been crapped on and crapped on for the last season and a half. Like, I don't have any pity left for her now. It's... I think that Laurel, she started off as a character who made sense with what they originally thought was going to be the direction the show took, and then the show moved past her very quickly, where they still, the first season I felt like was a lot more kind of soap opera-y, and so it felt like a lot of the plots were just driven by, oh, Laurel's upset about something again, and she's like stomping off before, and nobody's going to explain it to her, and that was, she just became very annoying very fast, and... Thea also had the same problem in the beginning, but they have made her a stronger character in her own right. And I, uh, I can't wait to see what she's gonna do. Like going off to hang out with Merlin for that's gonna be super cool. Yeah. But Laurel, it feels like for the last season, the show has moved past her, and they're still trying to find something, anything they can do to make her interesting. Instead so of this whole run, like I would prefer. Yeah, so... <laughs> All of season two has just been like, oh, what if we, like, okay, she's an alcoholic. Um, do, do we just do constantly... That, is that the writer's fault, the actress's fault? Like, it did, is it because she's not connecting with the fans? Like, do people hate the way she's being portrayed, or is it... or what? I think she, she just has... She has a place in a show that is not this show. She's not a bad character. She's just a character that belongs in a more soap opera kind of thing. She's not She's not as strong as like a Lois Lane type character, and Arrow has so much going on that there's just not that much for like this random lawyer who... Chick. Yeah, whereas Black Canary took over the like the romantic... Uh, the romantic thing with Oliver and is doing that a lot better. And then now that they have Quentin Lance working with uh, Arrow and helping him out, then we have his like connection to the law enforcement. And so she's just kind of like floating in the breeze without anything that's really necessary for her character to be there. Other than that, she's an established character and they don't want to drop a bridge on her. 
But I think they're going to make her the new Black Canary. I really hope they don't, but it's... I feel like that was kind of like how in season one he started calling Thea Queen Speedy. And she's not going to be the new Speedy, but... You, you don't think so? You don't think that the whole point of her going off with Merlin, potentially, like, you know... She's going to be in, Like, you don't think she'll come back as Speedy? She'll be evil well, Speedy. Well, that's... No, that's uh, Roy Harper's Speedy now. And they, he's, like, started using that name, and they had to show her, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like a reference to Thea, and that was the writer's covering up that they kind of um, uh, dropped the ball on that one. But I do, I'm sure that Thea's going to come back doing something, and I don't know if she's going to be like Merlin Jr. or whatever, but I do know that I'm excited for it. What, what would I, you love it if, I really hope she actually calls herself Kid Merlin. That would make my day. <laughs> what, what, what would you guys think if, if, uh, if, or I don't know what the legalities of this would be, but what, do you th- what would you guys think of... Um, uh, Oracle, and now that we've got Black Canary, you know, like, coming in and, and actually having... A birds um, of Prey. Birds of Prey, exactly. Well, fel- I mean, Felicity is basically the Oracle of this group. Right. That's The only reason that she's not Barbara Gordon is that they're trying to stay away from the Batman wheelhouse of characters. So what do you guys think is going to happen with Harley Quinn? Was that just a nod, or do you think there's something that's going to happen there? I think that was just another one of, of the writers being like, oh, hey, you recognize this thing? And the I feel like it was... Because they and the internet went insane about that. I don't think they're going to take start like adding Batman characters into the show. I think they just knew the internet would go insane. I thought that was horrible. Like, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really cool. Like, Geek Mike was like, woo! But, like, TV show watching Mike was like, Jesus, fuck. Yeah, it's I was always, just like, oh, we get it. You take it's always places. a heartbreaker. Stop it's a heartbreaker when you know me. that the show can't do the thing that it's say, suggesting it might do. Like, you're like, oh, they're hinting, but then you know, like, because of some kind of Fox versus CW rights, they can't do it, and you're like, ah, Batman can't be on a great Superman show. Yeah. <laughs> It's a sad time. Same with, like, you can't have crossovers with the uh, X-Men slash Spider-Man slash Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a sad time yeah. to be capitalists. <laughs> no, it's always a good time to be capitalists. It's a sad time to be a fan who doesn't own the rights and make millions and millions of dollars from said IP.